available Android Wear smartwatches on the Google Play Store right now. This happens to be one of the cheaper options at $199. This is actually very similar in spec to the Gear Live Watch from Samsung. So this has a 1.63 inch AMOLED display, 320 by 320 resolution. This has half a gig of RAM, has a 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon 400 processor, that's a dual core, with a 360 milliamp hour battery. This is available in only one configuration, which gets you a leather watch strap in a light brown color, but of course you can swap these out and install your own if you prefer. Now the Zen watch does feature some unique design characteristics, so although we have a square watch face, it does have a curved design. So the glass and the body of the watch is curved, although the display is not curved, but it gives you a more premium look, a little more upscale than something like the Gear Live. Alright, so let's go ahead and crack into our box here. I'm just going to slice the plastic on the back. All right, so let's go ahead and lift the lid here. And there we go, Asus Zen Watch. Pretty nice presentation here. So let me go ahead and pull this out. Should come up with the rest of the packaging here. So you can see it's in a little tray. All right, so there is our watch. Let's go ahead and pull off our uh, plastic here. We have some more pieces of plastic to peel off here on the clasp and on the inside of the clasp. So let's go ahead and peel that off. Now before we get to the watch, let's go ahead and clear the contents of our packaging here. So we have a micro USB charging cable for the cradle that comes with this. So you can see we also have our wall adapter here. Pretty compact travel wall adapter with the SUS branding. On the inside we'll find our paperwork including a warranty guard, parts and features, and a quick start guide which tells you a little bit about this watch and Android Wear. And inside we have that charging cradle, kind of similar to Samsung's charging cradle. It's kind of bulky here. So you can see this large charging cradle that snaps on the back with the micro USB port along the side. So kind of an adapter for charging the watch. In fact, we can go ahead and snap that on right now. So you can see I need to line up the pins right here. Just snap it on. And there you go. Definitely not as premium looking as the watch itself, but it gets the job done. Of course, you can see the Asus branding on the back. You can see the watch face on the front and you're good to go. Now you can see on the back we have this nice metal back panel which lacks a heart rate sensor like most Android Wear smartwatches, but it is on the front and I'll show you how that works. Now we also have these screws at each corner, those are torque screws. We have our electrical charging connections at the bottom, so no inductive charging like on the Moto 360. We have our Asus Zen Watch branding as well as a water resistance label up top. You can see that we have a microphone right here along the side, and then we have our power button which is kind of hidden and recessed at the bottom, which means you're less likely to accidentally trigger it, which I actually kind of like but you can operate this just by pressing and holding it with your finger. Looking at the leather watch band, you can see they've made these really easy to remove. All you have to do is pull this lever and it pops right out and you can add your own if you prefer. Now the included watch band is actually pretty nice. We have this genuine leather, raw leather finish on the inside. Of course, you can see Asus Zen watch branding on the other watch band. On the front, you have this nice stitched brown leather watch strap. So if you don't like brown, you're gonna have to swap this out for something else. So on the front, again, a 1.63 inch display AMOLED. You can see the curved glass, although the display again is flat. Now you can see at the edges, they've kind of rounded off the display corners to kind of match the rounded design of the watch face. Now the Zen watch is made of premium material so we have a stainless steel watch face and a stainless steel back panel and we have that rose colored layer in between that highlights the curve of the design. Now that rose gold color is actually a piece of plastic but again it looks pretty high quality and that rose gold does a nice job matching with the brown leather. And again, you can see that nice curved glass design, which not only looks good, feels nice in the hand when you're scrolling through the interface. Another nice thing with the Zen watch, especially for a budget watch, is the clasp. So they're using a metal band clasp, which is definitely a lot more premium than the buckle clasp or some other type of fastener that other Android Wear smartwatches are using lately. So I definitely like this because, for example, it doesn't crimp the leather band. It fastens much more securely and is easier to adjust. So definitely a big fan of this watch design. Now the only problem with this sort of clasp on a leather band is that it sticks out a lot toward the bottom here. So you can see we have this nice protrusion here which does get in the way. Now our next step is to boot this up by tapping and holding the power button along the right side here. So again, of course, we're running Android Wear which is compatible with any Android device running 4.3 or newer. Now Android Wear is basically the same on all devices, just updated for certain software features like different watch faces or different ways it implements some features like the heart rate monitor. Alright, so let's go ahead and set it up. We're going to select English and then we have to go to the Android Wear app on our Android phone. Alright, so I have my Nexus 6 here with Android Wear installed already. It's also running my Moto 360 right now. Alright, so we're going to go up here to add another device here, so pair with a new wearable. 
And it's searching for it right now. So right now, it sees my Moto 360. Just found the Asus ZenWatch 141F. All right, so I just have to click the pair button on each device, and I'm good to go. Now, we're all booted up and ready to go. And, of course, it did need to run a software update. So you can see right now we're in ambient display mode, which is displaying the clock and our most recent notification at the bottom in a low-powered state. If you want to wake it up, just tap the screen, and you can scroll through your notifications. Now, you can also mute the screen by covering it with your palm. You can also use the power button along the side, although that's a little hard to use in this case. Alternatively, you can also just flick your wrist to wake up the screen. Now, if you're not familiar with Android Wear, let me cover the basics here. Now, basically, Android Wear is receiving all your notifications from your attached smartphone. So to see your notifications, just swipe up on the screen. It takes you to your most recent notifications in chronological order. Now, you can dismiss them by swiping to the right, or you can act upon them by swiping to the left. So you can see in this case, I can open the app on my phone. So it just opens the app on my phone, takes me to where that notification was pushed. So if I unlock my phone now, it takes me right to the app. Toward the bottom, you'll find a lot of your Google Now features. So you'll see your heart rate monitor, you'll see my music player, my stocks, and my weather conditions. So you can see when I swipe right on my weather conditions, I can see my weekly weather conditions, or I can just open the app on my phone. Now basically, the watch face is your home screen. So if you swipe down on the home screen, you can see your battery life, current day, as well as your option to mute the phone. So if you just swipe down here, you can mute it or unmute it, and you get the little status icon in the upper part of the display. Now, if you tap and hold the watch face, you can select one of the other watch faces that are available. So you can see ones that ASUS has added, and then if you keep scrolling through here, you'll find the standard Android Wear watch faces. Now, one of the watch faces here includes a lot of information, such as the date and time, any calls you may have received, your battery life, which is very nice to have without having to swipe down to see it. Now, if you ever want to quickly hide these notifications, just swipe down to mute your device, swipe again to unmute it. Now when you're on your watch face, all you have to say is, okay Google, what's the weather like tomorrow in Rochester Hills? So you can see no voice feedback here and it also overrides the okay Google command on your phone as well. Now you can also swipe up to dismiss and you can see the available actions for Google now. So you can see show my steps, what's my heart rate, send a message, that sort of thing. You can also see if we scroll all the way down here, we have two options, settings and start. Now under settings, you have lots of controls such as your brightness. Now if you go to brightness, you can see that by default it was set to one, but I've set it to three, but you can set it all the way up to five. There is no auto mode because there is no ambient light sensor. You can also swipe to the right to go back. That's uh, true across the system. Now we can scroll through here to see your Bluetooth devices, ambient display on or off. Ambient display basically shows you the clock and your most recent notification persistently. So if you want to turn that off to save battery life, you can. We also have airplane mode. We can power it off and we can restart it or we can reset the device back to default. We can also change the wash face from here and see about the software on this device. Now, if you want to get to your apps on the watch, you'll have to go to the start screen down here. You can see we have a compass, find my phone, the fit app, we also have a flashlight, the Hue controller, that's a companion app from the Hue control app that's on my phone, Google Keep, we also have Play Music, as well as Remote Camera, which I'll show you. We also have Remote Control from my Google Nexus Player. I also have an SOS app for sending emergency messages to emergency contacts, Up by Jawbone. Again, these are apps that have become pre-installed from ASUS. We also have the Wellness app, which is what you would use to monitor your heart rate. So let's go ahead and launch the Wellness app here. So we're going to swipe here to get to our heart rate monitor. We're going to tap here. It's going to give us a little tutorial on how this works. Basically, you tap and hold both sides of the display with our fingers. So there we go, 87. It's definitely a finicky monitor. It's hard to get exactly right and does deliver pretty inconsistent results. So definitely don't use this for medical diagnosis. It's just there for a rough idea of your heart rate. Now, in case you're wondering, this does not work terribly well with the included heart rate monitor in Google Health here. So if we swipe here to launch the heart rate monitor, we're going to swipe to start measuring our heart rate. Just doesn't seem to be terribly accurate and does deliver very inconsistent results. So there we go. 90 definitely isn't right. So let's try again. So there you go. It's all over the place. So you're better off using that wellness app. Now, it's definitely easier to open these apps with your voice. So you can say, OK, Google, launch wellness. The ZenWatch also works with a series of companion apps which you can download free from the App Store. One of them is the ZenWatch Manager. So this allows us to, for example, change the watch faces. And you can see there's quite a few more watch faces you can add and you can customize it here. So for example, you can change the coloring of some of these watch faces if you prefer. So again, you have more options available in this app than you do on the watch itself.
We also have Unlock My Phone, so you can use this similar to how Android 5.0 uses Smart Lock. So you can enter in a PIN code, and as long as your watch is connected to your device, it will bypass that PIN code and unlock the device for you. We can also enable Cover to Mute, so we can mute incoming calls or alarms just by covering the watch face. We also have an SOS companion app for the watch, so you can activate an emergency message to emergency contacts that will relay your current conditions and your whereabouts so they can locate you. You can also use Find My Watch to help locate your watch. Of course, the watch does not have a speaker, but it will vibrate for you. And when you're done, just swipe to dismiss. We also have Forgot Phone Warning. So if you walk away from your phone when your watch is on your wrist, it will start vibrating to notify you. We also have our flashlight. Basically, this turns the screen into a flashlight just by giving you a solid color. So you have white, and you can change this to another color just by swiping up on it. You can also tap and hold on the screen to enable blinking mode, if that's useful to you. And you can switch between the colors as well. We also have our compass app here, which is useful. So again, it finds north, and you can move it around, and it continues following north. It's fairly accurate, does the job. And if you want to dismiss these apps, just swipe to close them. The ASUS Manager will also point you to recommended apps, including the ASUS Wellness app, which will download the information from your watch and put it on your phone. So you can keep track of your pedometer, calories burned, your heart rate, that sort of thing, and see it in this timeline. We also have a remote camera app which allows you to use your Android Wear smartwatch as a live viewer and shutter release button for your camera on your smartphone. So as you can see here, I have live feedback of the camera on my smartphone right on my watch and it's pretty good. It's not very smooth, but it gets the job done. Now if I want to snap a photograph, I just tap the screen focuses it, takes the photograph, and I get a little thumbnail preview of that photograph. Now, alternatively, I can just twist my wrist and it'll take the photograph for you. I can also switch to my video camera here by swiping up. I get to some of my controls here, so I can select video camera, goes to video camera mode on my phone, and I can start recording video by either twisting my wrist or just tapping the screen. Now, as you can see here, I did have live feedback before I start recording, but once you start recording, that live feedback ends. I can stop my video recording, and I get a little thumbnail of the recording I just made and its length. I also have controls here like zoom, so I can zoom in on my scene just by tapping these plus and minus icons. It's not terribly responsive, but it's good enough. You can also select a timer here. Just manually select your timer, and you can tap your screen to start the countdown. And you can disable or enable the flash like so. So in the end, the Zen Watch does offer a compelling package for $199 with nice materials and a unique design with that curved glass display, which means this device is really nice to interact with because you're swiping on that screen all the time. It's ideal to have something that's curved around it so it feels nice and natural. We also have that OLED display with those deep blacks, which means the watch face kind of floats on your wrist. The rest of the watch sort of disappears, so it's a really neat effect. You also have those really vivid colors, and it looks pretty good off-axis, although it's not great outdoors. So it kind of gets washed out in bright sunlight. OLED is also more battery efficient, so I'm able to get at least a day and a half out of this watch, which usually means you'll have to charge it at night in order to get a reliable full day out of your watch. The Zen Watch is IP55 certified, so it is dust and water resistant, but this is splash resistance. This is not submersion, so don't take this one swimming. So in the end, the Zen Watch is definitely the best looking square faced Android Wear watch you can buy today, and it happens to be the cheapest. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. So you can see we also have our wall adapter here. Pretty compact travel wall adapter with the Seuss branding and the power port.